U.S. strong arming may have worked for Canada and Mexico in sealing the new NAFTA deal, as it's called, but a bunch of other countries are saying, not with us. They're not going to bully us. Now, we're talking about the European Union with its $17.7 trillion GDP putting up its fists on Friday, saying it has the economic might to withstand any arm twisting on a trade deal. This, as the U.S. ponders, a poison pill. What is that? Well, that would allow the U.S. to freeze or quit trade deals with any country that enters trade relationships with a so-called non-market country. You could read China. Is that a red line countries will respect or outright ignore? In a Fox Business exclusive, let's bring in former trade representative Ron Kirk, who's negotiated quite a few deals himself. Ambassador, let's tackle this poison pill issue first, because it could encompass multiple trading blocks. The U.S. wants to replicate the provision within the Canada-Mexico deal that would allow the U.S. to veto the agreement if one or both decides to do deals with China. Will that effort to link everyone together to pressure China, is that going to work? Liz, you, you, you correctly noted, you've, always, you've already heard from one of our most important uh, longtime commercial and strategic allies in Europe uh, that they don't want any part of that. And look, the simple reality is we are in a globally competitive environment, and these are great allies and friends to have as we have used in enforcement matters against China. But we'd be fooling ourselves to think that just because we don't want to do business with China, that Europe or Canada or Mexico or, or, or the, the UK aren't more than happy to step uh, into that vacuum that, that we unfortunately are creating. And well, I think it will be a much more difficult proposition to try to enforce that with a trading with, block with as the European large Union. and significant as the European Union. Well, Jean-Claude Juncker, remember this, where he and President Trump, there was that big moment, and it came down during our hour, and it was, it was great because the viewers were just waiting on this, and it came, where the two came out and said, we do have a deal, and the deal was we're going to hold off on the 25% tariffs that the U.S. had wanted to slap on foreign imports, the Mercedes and the BMWs and the Audis and the right. Volkswagens of the world. World um, during the during the negotiating, so to speak. Well, the U.S. got some decent things out of this modernization of the old NAFTA, and some Democrats have even complimented it, saying, "You know what? You got better worker pay, even for the Mexicans. You got uh, the country of origin status for U.S. cars, where more of the car has to be sourced from parts here in the U.S." And uh, that certainly spoke to what Democrats have wanted in the past. So why wouldn't that work with, for example, the European Union bloc? Well, you don't have, one, you don't have an integrated manufacturing uh, base as we have created in North America effectively over the last 20 years. Secondly, wages in, in Europe are higher than they are in the United States. I mean, if you think about it, G Germany is one of the most unionized economies in the world. Their wages are certainly commensurate to those in the U.S. And you have very mature regulatory environments through most of the members of the European Union. And so the work that we were doing there was frankly to try to harmonize the regulatory side of our relationship more so than it was uh, dealing with tariffs. So I just think it's a very different negotiating challenge okay. when you're dealing with countries that have like-minded uh, economies in terms of maturity and like-minded regulatory systems. But Ron, I remember you being here and, and several others coming on and saying the right way to do this. Uh, President Trump is right. There's an unfair playing field. But the way he's going about it isn't right. Well, don't you think that sort of banding together with allies to pressure a country that is not behaving properly and that is conducting unfair trade is the way to go? Uh, and is it that maybe President Trump might have done a little backwards that first he attacked them and then said, hey, join us in this fight against China. But in the end, the ends just should justify the means and get China to step up and behave properly. Well, Liz, to prove I can be brief occasionally, <laughs> you know, my father would teach me that, that that wasn't as much a question as it was an answer. Uh, look, our administration sued China in some capacity over 10 times and prevailed in every case because we didn't do so unilaterally. We did it as part of a coalition 
with Canada and Mexico and the United Kingdom and France and the European Union and Japan. And, good, you know, right or wrongly, this administration has almost, in every one of those cases, gone out and started an, unnes an unnecessary trade skirmish with them. But I would also make the case, and I know that, that, that we have made the decision to pull out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, okay. but part of the genius of that coalition, of those 11 uh, countries yeah. uh, within the Asia Pacific is we were putting together a regulatory framework to which China would then have to step up in order to comply. Right, and to we comply. had at least the first beginnings of disciplines about what the rules of the road ought to be for okay. non-market economies and state-owned economies. And the reality is we backed away from that. And I have to note that this new sort of NAFTA 2.0, for the most part, took out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership those improvements to okay. intellectual property and other matters that we'd already negotiated and achieved. Good to see you, Ambassador. It's, it's an ongoing battle, lots of countries to work out trade deals with, and uh, we'll have you back. Thank you so much. Ambassador Ron Kirk.